Um, you did not get on the mic afterwards and say, you know, obviously title shot again, rematch. Obviously, I've I've earned this. Winning as champion of all time. You didn't do that even backstage. You haven't done that on social media, which is kind of the norm. Why not? Because I'm focused on getting healthy. I, I'm not. You know, at the end of the day, I, I have some injuries I need to take care of. And obviously, you know, I, I want to get that one back. But I'm not going to stop another person from making money when he's a champion. He wants to go out and defend it. But like if Henry's like, hey, I want to fight at, you know, December, the end of the year card, I'm healthy enough to give me a challenger. Go ahead. Go do it, Henry. You know, go do your thing. If he's going to be a champion for a long time, we, we will our roads will cross again. But my main focus right now is getting healthy. One of the first things he said after he won the fight was, I'm going to do what DJ didn't do. I'm going to go up to 135. TJ's team is saying, we're going to go down to 125. What do you make of all this? Now you're not involved anymore. You're on the outside looking in. What do you make of this talk? I think it's, I think it's good, good for them. If that's what they want to do, let them do it, you know? Uh, I think if uh, I read somewhere, TJ said he woke up. And, well, he was weight cutting. He hit 133. So if he wants to do it, go have him do it, you know? I mean, I don't think there's nothing wrong with it at all. Let them do what they want to do, dog. Let's do it. You know, options are on the table. I, I like the 205 pound matchups. It just depends on what happens with DC, Gustafsson, and somehow John Jones comes back after so we spend it for four years. I mean, come on. The sport is starting to get a little a little jokey. Man, I'm, I'm just sick of it. Washing Brock, washing John. You, you're going to get down to real business. These guys, you know, they should be suspended for a long time. People are learning how to cheat the system. You saw it as a owned by the UFC. I like fighting clean. I've always fought clean. I want to fight clean people and, and uh, I want to fight fair. Would fair. you fight John Jones if he came back? <laughs> <laughs> I want I want a fair playing field. You know. You saw this got a step their game up and be what they were in the beginning because in the beginning it seemed like they were doing their job. Now it seems like they're being owned. So sad to see, but hopefully they can correct itself and we can get on the right path. So I'm sick of it all, but I love it all at the same time. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I mean, knowing that that fight is being booked because the fight with him and Khabib, it's the money fight, it's the fight fans want to see, it's the fight the division needs, it's all of those things. Absolutely, yeah. Listen, I, I said many times when the, when the Mayweather-McGregor fight was happening, this kid might never fight again. When you make that kind of money, it's life-changing, you know? So it's, it's been, he hasn't fought inside the octagon in almost two years. Were you calling him regularly? Were you, were you dropping him messages saying, come on, Connor, come back to the octagon, we all want to see you fight? No, no. In, th in this business, you, you, you have to want to fight. You have to be hungry. You have to, uh, you know, really desire to come back. And, and you just let these guys take their time and let it build up and, and, and let them get that fire back. And when was the first time you knew that he was coming back? Did he drop you a message? Did you hear via someone else or was it straight from the horse's mouth? Yeah, no, I knew, I knew since probably, um, uh, I don't know, the beginning of, of this year, I knew that he was interested in coming back. It was just a matter of when. It seems this October 6th day, which is in Vegas, it's going to be an amazing night of action. Um, it seemed to a lot of us that Conor had chosen possibly the most dangerous man in the UFC, in Khabib. And he seemed to be coming back really quickly. Were you shocked that he wanted to fight Khabib on the 6th of October? No. That's why Conor McGregor is a massive superstar. In the fight business... Fans love guys who are real fighters and want to fight everybody and only want to fight the best. And that's been Conor McGregor since the day he set foot in this company. And, and you know, uh, he actually had told me at one point, I'll fight him in Russia. 
You know, that, that's just the way Connor is. Connor fears no one. He wants to fight everyone, and he'll fight anybody, any place, anywhere, and that's why people love him. Is that what you look for in a fighter? Yes. That's what, I, that's what I love in fighters. That's what everybody loves in fighters. You know, there's no secret formula. You know, obviously, Conor McGregor has an awesome personality. He hits hard, and he'll fight anybody. That's it. That's why people love him. And that makes him a superstar, not just in the world of mixed martial arts, but a superstar full stop. Absolutely. You know, he, he can talk really well, but he absolutely positively backs it up. Uh, it's been commented on by a lot of people that the bus attack that he went through in New York has gone from something that was disgusting to mixed martial arts to part of the promotional hype for this fight. Well, no, it, it, was, it was definitely something bad, uh, you know, that I didn't expect from, from anybody. And, you know, he, he, he got in trouble legally in New York. He had to go, you know, to court and hire lawyers and go through lawsuits and all kinds of, of stuff that goes along with something like that. And, uh, yeah, obviously going into the fight, it, it's definitely part of the storyline. How frustrating was it for you that he wasn't coming back because he had these legal problems around him? Um, I, I don't know if it was frustrating for me because he couldn't come back because of that. It was more frustrating for me that it happened. Have, have you, since that's happened, have you tried to change maybe the way security is or the way that fight nights happen so it can never happen again, not with Connor, not with anyone no, else? No, because the, the way that this happened, our security actually did a, did a great job during that whole thing. You know, we had a very, it was at a time when people were loading onto the buses, everything was over, you know, everything was over. And, and if you look at how much my staff was outnumbered, they actually did a great job in, in containing that and keeping anybody from getting seriously injured. He does have very long arms. That's going to give Tyron Woodley a lot of problems. I don't care what he says. Yeah, get rid of that now. Yeah, um, yeah. There's going to give him a lot of problems. But still, the the only thing is, and you know, I'm sure he knows what he's doing. And maybe, may, maybe a couple of drinks here and there is what he has because he just came out of a training of camp. So his weight's good. His condition will be good. So he doesn't need to do like a full on eight week kill myself camp. That's the benefit of going back to back fights. You know what I mean? You're already there. You've lost the weight. You've done the hard work. You've got the cardio. Yeah, of course, you tailor things for each opponent. You know, maybe you'll uh, do some more wrestling, more jiu-jitsu, whatever it is. But the physical work, the physical work of the A, getting in shape, losing the fat, and getting your cardio, that's done. That's there. So you're already at a head start. So that will be beneficial. Tyron Woodley on the flip side, as we've said, he's been on the sidelines for over a year now. So, uh, but but he, he's a professional as well. He's not a guy that lets him get himself out of shape. In fact, Tyron Woodley, I'll tell you a story. We were, you know, when you look at him, he's not a big guy. And when you saw Woodley and Till square up, it was a case of, holy shit. Yeah. Darren Till is massive compared to him. Um, and he is. But when you see Tyron Woodley with his shirt off, it's a different matter. A we were getting changed. Dude. Yeah, we were getting changed at the Fox Studios once. And we're just chatting away, and he takes his shirt off. And I look back, it's like, holy shit. He's like a superhero. He yeah. really is. He's back, and he's, he's incredibly ripped, incredibly powerful. So that's where he carries most of his weight. He's not the tallest guy, but, uh, yeah, don't think that high advantage. Uh, I mean, he's used to dealing with people that are higher, sorry, high, taller, have a reach advantage, all that. He's done that time and time again. So it's going to be an interesting one. But I'm not sure hanging out outside the clubs, getting into fights is the best preparation. As we've seen, no and there's also drinking. Press, is, there, is there something to that? I mean, I you know, look, you you've been known to to have a beer or two. Do you what what is your kind of rule with drinking during a fight camp? Because do you I, I well you, it's, it's not a strict rule that you don't listen. Drink. You'll have a glass of wine here or there. I know you've talked about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that Darren. I mean, we don't have a close relationship. And far from it. I've only actually spoke to the guy on a couple of occasions. Um, see, that video might have been. He just got back from America. Maybe he's going to have one quick night out with the boys before he goes into camp. Mm. Now, remember, I just said he um, he just he's coming off that fight from Wonderboy. That wasn't that long ago. You know what I mean? And if he's kept himself in shape and all that stuff, then, you know, he could probably get away with one night. Just have a quick night out with the boys and then hit camp hard before he fights Woodley. That's probably what that was. I, I don't think uh, Till, even though I don't know him, I don't think he's stupid enough to be going out there partying uh, all the way through fight camp. Do you guys so that do was probably that? a one-off, and then what? 
Or do you know any guys that do that? I mean, I guess without naming names, or maybe there's guys that just don't give a shit that, that do just party throughout the entire fight camp. Chuck Liddell, drunk. by all accounts, was notorious for it back in the day.